as the Tuscany Tavern becomes more successful, it gains both more customers and employees. The town's Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, as planned, closes the restaurant on Sunday mornings for a UEU service in the restaurant. Welcome, everyone, to our first Unitarian Universalist service in this location. I thank you all for coming and I hope this place proves suitable to most of you for future services. I will make the opening statement as our chalice is lit, the pride flame by Linda Lee Franson. We light this flame to ignite our hearts and minds, the spark of knowledge that enlightens, the shimmering hope that burns, the blazing love that engulfs our actions, the bonfire of our commitment. We light this flame for those who celebrate themselves who fear, who hope, who persevere, who stand on the side of love for all. We light this flame for those who have been ridiculed, that they may find peace. For those who have fought to marry, that they may celebrate. For those who live in uncertainty in the world, that they may have hope. We light this flame to renew our commitment that no one shall ever again suffer for the right to love. We light this flame to celebrate our kaleidoscope of diversity working, loving, and living on the side of love. For this, we light this flame. At this time I am proud to introduce our speaker for today, Dale Husband. I thank you all for not only inviting me to attend this service, but to give the sermon here as well. Even though I am not an actual UU minister, I will give it my best shot. First, consider this Bible reference, Luke chapter 9, verses 49 and 50. Master, said John. We saw someone driving out demons in your name and we tried to stop him, because he is not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for whoever is not against you is for you. That seems like an absolute proclamation. Jesus certainly did not say, whoever preaches my doctrines exactly according to some standard made long ago is for you. And yet down through history we have bigoted Christians fighting each other over minor theological differences. By contrast. We have Unitarian Universalists that welcome atheists, Christians, Jews, Muslims, Pagans, Buddhists, Hindus, and others in one association. Ever since the UU first united in 1961, it has remained committed to both its unity and its diversity. Some might question how atheists can be spiritual. Keep in mind that spirituality, as I see it, is based not on supernatural claims, but on remembering our connection with each other as human beings. Our connection to Earth as living things on it, and the Earth's connections to the rest of the cosmos. It is losing sight of these connections and the empathy that comes with them that degrades us as people, not the lack of belief in a God. And tribal impulses can be made worse by those who claim that God is on one side in a dispute with an opposing tribe, motivating one to fight against that other tribe to defeat them. It is exactly the desire to seek truth that should motivate ourselves to question everything we think we know. Regardless of how popular it is, how long such claimed knowledge has been around or where the claims came from. Even people with the best of intentions may be mistaken, and there are also con artists who tell lies that appeal to selfish egos of others and believing those lies enables a con artist to control those he gained as followers. It is precisely the desire to avoid misleading anyone that I do not seek followers for myself, only equal partners who can assist me in seeking and reporting truth and promoting justice in society. When we live as equals, we are all stronger together. And that concludes my sermon. Thank you, Dale. Let us continue. Does anyone have any joys or concerns they wish to share with the fellowship? For those of you who believe in prayer, I ask you to pray for my uncle who lives in Nebraska and owns a farm there. Last week he was badly injured in an accident and nearly lost his left hand. The injury was treated, but he is now fighting an infection that is threatening his hand anyway. I will pray for your uncle, Jason. I had a serious falling out with my parents this past week and they forced me to leave their home after they found out I am pagan and refused to attend a Catholic church ever again. I am now looking for a new home and a job to support myself after I move. My mother runs a cat shelter in Boston where I grew up. Yesterday I got a call from her and she told me a pregnant cat gave birth to six kittens, but the mother and all but one kitten died. She is now trying to keep the last kitten alive. I am happy to report to all that Debbie Smith and I are a couple. Until I got to know her, I always assumed my first love would be with a boy, but she taught me that love that is unconditional and with respect is more important than what is between your legs. Oh, 
That's so sweet, Carrie. And I agree. Let us now extinguish our chalice with this reading, Be True, Be Well, Be Loving by Cynthia Landrum. We leave this gathered community, but we don't leave our connection, our concerns, our care for each other. Our service to each other, to the world, and to our faith continues. Until we are together again, friends, be strong, be well, be true, be loving. A few minutes later. I'm sorry about what happened with your parents. I had to keep my atheism secret from my own parents until I got married to my husband Rich and then we both came out to both our sets of parents. To this day, my parents think Rich corrupted me, but it was really the hypocrisy among Christians themselves that drove me away from my parents' faith. My mother was raised Catholic, and my father was Methodist and my parents have attended Methodist and Episcopal churches over the decades. Anyway. We are willing to help you with both a place to live and a job. Do you cook, or would you like to be a waitress? I'm not really that good at dealing with people, so being a waitress is out. I can try cooking, but I think I could serve you best as a bouncer. In case someone gets drunk or otherwise causes trouble. I am skilled in karate. Let's try you as a cook and we can call on you to remove disruptive persons in an emergency. Do you at least know how to make and bake pizzas? Sure. How hard can it be? And what about a place for me to live? The house I share with my wife and our daughter has three bedrooms. We can offer you one. You will be charged rent, but the monthly amount is negotiable. You are perhaps the kindest people I've ever encountered. I hope I prove worthy of your trust. 